Hey, so today I'm at the Heinz History Center. It's, it's a museum in the center of uh, Pittsburgh. They have the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood set on display. Check this out. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? So Mr. Rogers made its television debut in 1968. And Fred Rogers actually wrote every single episode until the last one in 2001. That's pretty cool. Mr. Rogers would come through that door and he would come down these stairs and he would sit on that very bench. That's the very bench that they used throughout the show. The uh, funny thing is how, how much smaller this is compared to on TV. It's the magic of that wide angle lens. Everything appears to be so much bigger, but it was very small. And up there is King Friday's phone. That can be seen a lot where he's using the phone. That's Harriet Cow's desk. Has like the little the little pencils and everything on it. So this is Mr. McFeely's um, tricycle. If you remember, he was the mailman and he always rode a tricycle. So I was just having a quick conversation with one of the museum curators and he gave me an interesting fact. Um, Mr. McFeely uh, came about because Fred Rogers' middle name was McFeely. Interesting. This is uh, Mr. Rogers' uh, Book of Smiles. Do you remember that? The Smiles book. So behind Mr. Rogers is the, the picture picture, which is what he used to show children other worlds through video or films or, or pictures. But it was almost like uh, the first flat screen. So you could say Mr. Rogers had the first flat screen ever. Pretty cool. There's the railroad tank car, which carries the hot wax. So these are some of the puppets. These are the, uh, the platypus family. Remember there was like the, the, the mother, the father, and, and the kid or something like that? So these are the, the platypuses. Came by. You are a fine doctor, Dr. Bill. Well, I like being a doctor. Well, good day. This is the uh, this is the tree that has the the little door in it. Look at this. Hey, meow, lady meow. Henrietta Pussycat. Yeah. I'd like you to meet Mr. Struthers. Meow, 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 Struthers. Hello, Henrietta. Hi, hi, everybody. I just heard we were going to have some games around here. <laughs> right, you are, ex. So the tree looks like it's made out of some kind of like, um, like the leaves are like some kind of like fabric, and the bark, the base of the tree looks like it's like a, like a paper mache or something like that. So obviously, probably pretty brittle. There's the king. King Friday in his castle. This is awesome. The other place. Uh, Lady Eberlund and Daniel Tiger, I presume? Correct as always, Uncle Friday. Yes. The, the tracks for the trolley, Keith, they were in front. They went around the castle and they, uh, they were on pillars. And so the trolley would come from the back here come around and then back to the other side. So I guess that's lost or gone forever. So the castle looks like it's like a, um, looks like cardboard, maybe partially wood and some cardboard and some paper mache, something like that. It's hard to tell and you can't really get close to touch it, but that's kind of, that's what it looks like. It's not in horrible shape for being so old. So sadly, Mr. Rogers passed away in 2003 at 74 years old, right here in Pittsburgh, actually. But obviously, his legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of millions of us, millions of uh, people who were children back then and now are grown adults. What an amazing guy Fred Rogers was. Feeling, feeling. 
growing inside and when you wake up ready to say I think I'll make a snappy new day it's such a good feeling a very good feeling the feeling you know that I'll be back when the day is new and I'll have more ideas for you and you'll have things you'll want to talk about I will too I'll be back next time bye oh it's a beautiful night in this neighborhood <laughs> So many people have helped me to come to this night. Some of you are here, some are far away, some are even in heaven. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take, along with me, 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are? those who have cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life. Ten seconds of silence. I'll watch the time. Whomever you've been thinking about, how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they've made. You know, they're the kind of people television does well to offer our world. Special thanks to my family and friends and to my coworkers in public broadcasting, family communications, and this academy for encouraging me, allowing me, all these years to be your neighbor. May God be with you.